This video describes the 3D visualization of caulking block from the given orthographic views. It also describes the procedure for uh, making a 3D model in SOLIDWORKS. Front and the right side view of the caulking block are given to us along with the necessary dimensions and some general notes. We have a note here surfaces A, B, C of frontal surfaces uh, and if we look at the various uh, surfaces uh, in here you have uh, in the front view a rectangular surface and the one below it third one uh, several other such uh, rectangular faces a straight slot you have um, in the right hand side view you, you have an overall shape as shown here with the profile solid circles three of these and the other details with hidden edges to get the overall shape of the part uh, it is best viewed from the right side we have an overall shape uh, as shown with the outer contour to start with we consider the contour as shown on the right hand side view taking that as the surface we extrude this all across the width uh, of the part so this the surface that we see on the right hand side is sketched on the right plane uh, the starting uh, the right edge on the front view and it's extruded as shown by these shaded areas to get a 3d model as shown in the inset picture the next step is to identify the position of the frontal surfaces we have got the rectangular surface a uh, rectangular front surface c rectangular sur front surface d in the middle they all have the same height um, if you project a line from the top of these from or from the bottom of these onto the other side we get the position the static position or the location of these uh, planes either to lie on the uh, offset uh, frontal distance as shown here at a distance 1.76 from the back end or uh, at a distance of uh, one inch from the back end so to figure out the exact location of uh, one of these uh, surfaces uh, we try to look at the other details that go on that surface such as uh, straight slot which is appearing on surface d so the straight slot if we project a construction if we project projection line from the top and bottom of the straight slot it matches uh, with the, the the lines the hidden lines that you see here starting from the hidden edge here at a distance of 1.76 once we have identified the position of surface d we sketch the true shape of the surface d on the front face on the edge over here and then remove the material that lies uh, in, uh, over here leaving behind a wall thickness of 1.76 and on the new surface on the new uh, surface generated over here you're going to make the true sh shape of the of the straight slot and then cut it deep into it by a depth as shown here of 0.7 so these are the two inset pictures uh, describing the steps you have the first surface d generated and then from that surface you have the straight uh, the slot coming from the straight slot then we have the rectangular slot coming at the bottom of uh, the caulking block as shown uh, in the front view the true shape is seen in the front view we sketch this profile as a rectangle and then you locate the position as the surface d and from there on you cut it through uh, as a through all cut as indicated by the hidden edge above this gives you the depth of uh, the rectangular slot and this is how it would look like in 3d after the cut is taken we then have surface b which is uh, another parallel frontal face so we sketch the true shape of that on the on the surface d by projecting lines from the top of the surface b and the bottom of the surface b we find to have another hidden line here this is uh, at an offset distance of 0 0.04 from the surface d 
so we sketch it uh, the true shape is sketched on surface d and then we have a cut taken deep inside to generate the offset surface this is how uh, the 3d image would look like after generating the surface b we then identify the surfaces uh, a and c these two surfaces are coplanar as we have uh, no other edge here which matches with the top and the bottom of these two sketches. If you project a line from the top end and the bottom end here, it matches here at this particular location, which is at a distance of one inch from the back side. To generate the surface, you may sketch the true shape on the front face of the caulking block and then remove the material that comes on across the, the depth as shown here until you generate the surface behind. This is how the two surfaces will be generated. This is surface A and surface B as shown in the inset. There are two rectangular slots that needs to be removed from the surfaces A and C, starting from surfaces A and C. You have them shown here at the bottom in the shape of a rectangle. The two the true shape of these two are sketched on the coplanar surfaces and the cut if you look through by projecting a projection line that is uh, going all through till the end or the, till the back of the uh, back of the caulking block the yellow uh, region in here describes the slot that is generated from the two rectangular shape profiles The next step is to generate the feature as obtained from the hidden edge and the arcs as seen in the right side view. The profile that we see here belongs to the left wall of the object so as it is hidden in here and we have a wall here and then we have a cavity to generate and then we have the surface C. We have seen that there are surfaces D and A in between. So it doesn't appear on any of these uh, we, as we project some uh, projection lines from top of this circular arc we don't find to have any sharp edge over here to represent that uh, in a similar manner you have a vertical line here the bottom of which we don't have an indication here anywhere on the uh, on the region here except that uh, when you reach uh, at this location you have a horizontal line indicating that it, it falls on the left wall of the object so it is this thickness uh, that you have for the profile as shown in the right side view and uh, this has to be sketched uh, on the edge uh, on the far behind here the whole uh, contour as you see here can be sketched or you may sketch just the profile or, and uh, cut all what's uh, coming on the outer side of this arc to generate this profile this is the edge uh, representing the left face on which you sketch this profile and then cut extrude uh, to generate this feature this is how it would look like on the left wall of the object there's a small chamfer that comes on that left wall and uh, it's at 45 degree you may add that uh, on the left wall itself on the plane uh, on any plane on the left wall and then cut it by the same thickness as before to generate this feature and uh, that would be representing a rectangular surface here for the sloping surface generated by the chamfer the small red colored region in here is the feature uh, for this chamfer on top of the surface d this is the position for uh, surface d we find a small fillet and uh, this is uh, having a radius of 0 0.12 you may pick up the edge here and then cut it across the top edge to generate this fillet the fillet uh, as shown here in the inset picture the next feature is the circular hole there are two holes uh, diameter 0 0.312 in line so we have uh, the true shape of that on the right face and if you project uh, lines you find it to have uh, the hidden line from the bottom of that circle in the right in the right wall here with the axis line in the middle and a similar one 
in line if you go across the same axis line you have another one coming here in the left wall so these are the two holes coming from the same circular arc in the right hand side view so we select the right side view generate the first hole uh, by the depth as shown here and the second one in line along the left wall the picture here describes uh, the object with those two holes in the right and the left walls The next uh, feature is the threaded holes that we have uh, as seen from the right side. Both of these holes uh, start from the right face uh, and we drill them inside over here for a depth of 0.5. So that's a simple hole which goes through by a depth of 0.5. And then you have a threaded hole there. This is a quarter inch, uh, 20 threads per inch. You have a unified national coast thread, class of thread 2 B as the uh, internal thread. You have the depth of this thread as 0.4, so it's uh, threaded uh, to depth of 0.4, uh, however the hole is deep by half an inch. So these are the two holes that we have uh, as threaded holes uh, starting from the right face. There's a hole coming in from the bottom surface. So we have the surface here which was generated from the rectangular slot which was uh, generated in our previous uh, which was discussed in our previous steps we uh, you cut a hole here with a diameter 0.625 uh, with a depth of 0.38 having a conical tip at the bottom there's how it would look like uh, from the back side of the palm The next profile is uh, as uh, shown here with the hidden arc and uh, this is uh, when projected onto the other side. We do not have any line in this region until we reach here. There is a hidden line across uh, this part here. Further extended to the other side you find another hidden line. So there are two supports here going down to the floor which have been uh, truncated uh, in, the, in the shape as shown here by the profile. So this is uh, the contour that needs to be sketched. On the right plane you can sketch it on any right plane and cut it from the surface or sketch it on the surface and cut through until you reach the end of uh, the support so that's uh, the extrusion extrude cut region for uh, for the profile here on the right hand side view and this is how it would look like from the bottom side these two surfaces that you have here are generated from this profile in summary you have uh, the the steps uh, described above as uh, the overall block in the shape as seen from the right side. We generate the surface D from the true shape as seen in the front view. We generate a straight slot from that surface D uh, by sketching the straight slot on the surface D. We then have a rectangular slot coming from the same surface D from the bottom running through all the part. And then we have a surface B which is a parallel front face uh, to the surf and it's also parallel to surface D. You have uh, surfaces A and C being generated parallel to uh, D and the other frontal faces. You have uh, the two rectangular slots being cut out uh, from surfaces A and C as shown here with the yellow feature, uh, yellow colored feature. You then have the profile on the left wall of your block. Uh, with the profile as shown here, the profile has been chamfered from on the on the top here as shown with the red colored region. You have a fillet on top of surface D, and then we generate a hole in both the walls, uh, two holes in line with each other. Uh, we drill two threaded holes, uh, which come from the side wall, uh, right side wall, goes deep into the block there, and then we have a hole coming from the bottom surface. Uh, as seen from the the back side and then we have uh, from the bottom side the profile which cuts the the region and the support region for the whole block this is how the final shape would look like with all the features in there We now move on to model this in SOLIDWORKS. Start a new file. We 
consider the units as uh, inches. Select the right plane, make that a sketch plane. Use line command to generate the profile as seen on the right view. Define the dimensions. We have got a 45 degree included angle here and then uh, 0.7 as the height. Another 45 degree between the vertical line and the inclined line. And height of this small chamfer as 0.06. With this uh, fully defined, let's go to isometric sketch, isometric view, and then extrude this by using a mid plane and uh, over a depth of two inches. So that's your very first feature, the base feature. And then the next step is to generate the surface D. We pick up the surface uh, over here Make that a sketch plane, go normal to the surface and sketch a rectangular profile which is uh, symmetric about this part. You have a uh, width of which as uh, point, point 0.8 and point 0.4 as the distance between the center to one end. That's a fully defined sketch. Switching over to isometric view, extruded cut, and let this cut deep in there until you have a material of 1.76 behind. So this could be as uh, 2.44 as the overall uh, depth there, minus 1.76. That's the surface D. The next feature is to generate the straight slot that comes from this surface D. Select the surface D, make that a sketch plane and use the straight slot on the sketch toolbar. Going normal to the surface, drop the centers for the straight slot. Define the sketch. You have a 0.25 as the distance the width of the straight slot, you have a center to center distance as 0.44 and 0.22 from the center to make it symmetric. And the whole thing here is at a height of 0.38 from the top edge. That fully de defines your sketch. On the features toolbar, we have extruded cut. Cut this deep by depth of 0.7. Next is to generate the rectangular slot at the bottom. So we make use of the same surface. Make that a sketch plane. Go normal to it and add a rectangle at the bottom with the sizes as 0.64 symmetric with the center so we add uh, another dimension here which is given to us as 0.32 the height of this rectangular slot is 
Okay, we use the extruded cut to remove uh, it through all. We then generate the surface B, select the same surface D, make it a sketch plane going normal to the surface and then draw a rectangle for surface B which is from the bottom of the straight slot to the top of the rectangular slot below. Give the width for that surface B as uh, 0.32. And this is uh, symmetric uh, with the dimension here as 0.16 from the center. Cut this deep by a depth of 0.04. That's your surface B. We then generate the surfaces A and C. Uh, we select the front face, uh, make that a sketch plane, going normal to that. Since both of these A and C are coplanar, you may sketch them in the same sketch. Starting from the ends of uh, surface uh, A, the as is that we see, as is in the corners that we have uh, from surface D, we have uh, the two surfaces A and C. Give the distance uh, between the far ends here as uh, given 1.64 and then you have 0 0.82 from the center here. This is given as 0.82. That fully defines the sketch. Cut this deep inside so that you have a material left behind with a value of 1 inch. So we have an overall depth of 2.44 here. It would be 2.44 minus the value of uh, 1 inch. It can also be sketched on the back face there and then you take an offset from here by a distance of one inch and then have cut through all so that it removes the remaining portion. So that's another way by which you can add it in there. So these are the two surfaces, surface A and surface C. We generate the two rectangular slots from these surfaces. Pick up one of those two, both are coplanar. So you may pick up one of these, make that a sketch plane, go normal to it and add a rectangular sketch. which is coincident with the edge here um, of uh, the other surface uh, D. Make these two heights are uh, the same by giving a collinear relation between the horizontal lines. This has the, the same height as uh, the slot so you may also include this uh, with the collinear relation. The overall distance is given as 1 inch. And then we have uh, half an inch as the distance here between the left edge and the center to make it symmetric. With those two sketches in there, we go to features extrude cut and this one again is through all let's make it a bit transparent 
so that we see the features inside them. We now generate the profile on the left side here. Select this face, make this a sketch plane, go normal to that surface. This is as seen from the left, so we click on normal to again to flip it and have a look at it from the right side. Let's use the line, drop a line from the top here as a vertical line, then we have a arc to be generated. We move forward with the same command, go back, do not drop a point there, uh, just hover around and then move forward to generate an arc. This is a so the first arc, we move forward, go back to the previous point, do not drop there, hover around and then generate another arc from this command. Drop it down on so that it's coincident with the bottom edge. We have uh, some dimensions here as a distance of 2 from the center from the far end. There. We have uh, the radius uh, for this arc as uh, 0.24. Another one here, 0.44. The height of the vertical line, 0.12. And this is uh, at a position of 1.52 from the back end. We have got a relation here between this endpoint and the center there as vertical and that fully defines our sketch. You may complete the other sketch entities such as the horizontal line here, the vertical, the inclined line and the horizontal to make it as a closed contour. Um, but since we have uh, we have everything to be removed on the other side of this line, we can also make use of this line to cut the portion above it. We go over features, use extruded cut, and then we have got this uh, depth here as uh, we have one inch minus uh, 0 0.82, 0 0.18. That's the depth. Look at the direction of cut. This is uh, how, where the arrow points to. If this is uh, this is in the correct direction, if it's pointing downward, you need to flip the side to cut. Accept this. Generate the chamfer on the top here by using features, chamfer. Select the sharp edge above and then assign the dimension as uh, 0.06 as the linear distance and a degree of 45 degree angle okay next is a fillet on the top here so you use the fillet feature constant size pick up the edge and then assign it a value of 0.12 radius of 0.12 accept this Let me remove the transparency for now. Drill in the two holes that go from the right wall uh, in line uh, to the other wall on the left. So we select the right face here, make that a sketch plane. Going normal to that, sketch a circle from the sketch toolbar. Define this. Uh, with a size of 0.312 as the diameter. This is uh, concentric with the other arc behind, so we, may just, we can just turn on the header lines from the display style and then give a relation between the two arcs as concentric. 
this fully defines the sketch that's the uh, extrude extrude cut it needs to cut in both walls so we can safely use through all that as there is nothing that gets in between the path of this extrude cut we have uh, the other two threaded holes on the side wall here so select this uh, let's go to hole wizard and the features toolbar select the hole type as straight tab standard as an inch you have uh, the size as 0.25 that's a quarter inch hyphen 20 threads per inch uncheck the box show custom sizing you have the end condition for the hole as half an inch and then for the thread as 0.4 inches going over position tab select the right face and then drop two center points go normal to that surface to define the sketch by assigning the dimension between the center and the back edge as 0.76 same here between the center and the top edge 0.76 you have a distance between the center and the back edge as 0.22 center here and the top edge 0.26 the fully defined sketch accept this and complete the thread feature we have got uh, two threaded holes uh, the display is a simple form uh, as in simple form you can have a look at that in cosmetic thread by going over options and the standard toolbar Open up the document properties tab, go down to detailing and check the box for shaded cosmetic thread. And this is uh, the surface being indicated for the threaded vision. There's a hole that comes from the bottom side. So let's try to drill this using hole wizard from features toolbar. Select the hole type as uh, the hole. Standard as and say inch. You have uh, the size here. Let's check the box show custom sizing, and then specify the size as point six to five, and a depth of point three point three eight. Going over position tab, select the bottom surface and then locate the surface, uh, the center on that surface. Go normal to the surface and assign a dimension for the center from the far end there as uh, shown in the right side view. This is point A2. We have a relation between uh, the center and the origin here it lies in the in the middle of the block so we have it as a vertical relation fully define the sketch accept this uh, to complete the whole feature we then have a profile cut which would uh, break the the support uh, that you have uh, in the middle here the two supports these two uh, you have a hidden line appearing in here in this region in the front view and the true shape is seen on the side view so you may pick up any of these surfaces here right faces and sketch the profile and pick up the face on the right here so I'll make that a sketch plane go normal to it and let's turn on the hidden lines to get the boundaries there use a three point arc Sketch an arc here, complete the rest uh, of the profile by sketching lines 
you can also use convert entities uh, and get the lines from behind for example we select uh, this line here the line below and the third one here and say convert entities get this line in the present sketch trim entities trim to closest and remove the extra portion that you have on both of these two horizontal and vertical lines give a tangent relation between uh, the arc and the horizontal line the radius for this arc is uh, One point two five. Let's get it back into the shape. We have a distance here for the shoe as a point one. Now we have got a fully defined sketch. Looking at this in isometric view, cut this uh, from the surface inside. So you have features, extruded cut. We have the start of this cut coming from the surface, and which would be surface. And here, let me change the display style to shaded with edges. So it is this surface from where this, the cut to start with and then it runs through until it cuts the second support so we can say up to surface and identify the end condition here this is the region which will be cut all the way till the end there on the second support Let's assign it the material. It's a cold rolled steel. We have uh, the folder here for the steel. Cold roll. we can assign another color uh, okay can keep this uh, as the color like to see it in a with some transparency you may turn on the top level transparency to look at the inside details of this block you can split this into two win uh, two view and then have uh, over here the front view on the left and uh, the right one right view onto the right Let's zoom to fit in the right side view and uh, make it a hidden line visible display style. So this is uh, one way to validate our answer. These are the two views which were provided to us. Switching over back to single view. and a display with shades shaded an edge with the edge and removing the top level transparency this completes the 3d visualization of the caulking block and also 3d modeling in solidworks of uh, the caulking block when provided with orthographic views.